Let's take our Bibles and turn to the lectionary gospel of the day, Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. If you don't have your own copy of the scriptures or a cell phone with an app where you can read the scriptures, you can look up here on the screen and follow along with the reading. Matthew chapter 5, beginning with verse 13 and reading through verse 20. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But for I tell you that unless your righteousness, let's back up, I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll back up to verse uh, 19. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. O oh Lord, in the next few minutes, a lot of words will be spoken. I pray that the one that is clearest will be your word, your word tailor-made for each individual here. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Negroes must sit in the back of the bus. That's what the signs said. There are many of you here who were alive when those signs of racial segregation were posted in a number of states in America. Throughout the South, where I'm from, African American people, by law, had to sit in the back of the bus. There were signs on bathroom doors that said, whites only. At department stores, African Americans couldn't sit down at the lunch counter and have a club sandwich. You see, they were the wrong color. But in November 1956, the Supreme Court ruled it was unconstitutional for the public buses in Montgomery, Alabama to be racially segregated. And a few weeks later, in the month of December, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr announced the end of a boycott of those bus lines. 
For the first time, African Americans could step on a bus and could sit in any seat that was available. Dr. King knew that those African Americans who first got onto those newly integrated buses might run into some problems. They might run into some resistance, some anger, even some violence. He knew that by entering the buses, one could be walking into the heart of racial discrimination. And so he told them, listen to this, he told them that if you're walking into the heart of racial animosity or hatred, you have one option. One option. Be the light. Be the light. He typed out on a one page a set of guidelines for the African American people who would be boarding those buses. Fortunately, a yellow faded copy of that paper still exists. And among other things, Dr. King told his people, demonstrate calm dignity in all your actions. In all things, show forth courtesy and good behavior. Be loving enough, he said, to absorb evil. Be understanding enough to turn an enemy into a friend. If you are cursed, do not curse back. If you are struck, do not strike back. Pray for your oppressor and use spiritual force to carry on the struggle for justice. That's what Dr. King said and that's what his followers did. Now, can you imagine, there, are, there have actually been times in America when we have had leaders who have called us to spiritual greatness. When I first read those words of Dr. King, I thought to myself, Ooh, he is asking his people to do a very hard thing. I mean, after all, the African American people had been oppressed, they had been despised, they had been beaten, and they had been lynched. In effect, King was saying in response to all the evil, I want you to be calm. I want you to be dignified. I want you to be loving and nonviolent. And your strength to do these things will come, it will be rooted in prayer, in the Spirit. Now, I thought about all these things when I was pondering our text of the morning. Jesus here is instructing his followers to do something very hard, very difficult. In a world that is filled with so much darkness, Jesus said, I want you to be the light, the light of the world. Let your light shine so that people will see your good deeds and they'll give God the glory. You will not al be allowed to let your light be hidden. I'm sending you into this world of darkness 
with all of its evil, with all of its temptation, with all of its harshness, with all of its unjust situations, and I want you to be the light. Dr. King told his people, walk into those buses filled with the darkness of racial animosity and be the light. Jesus tells us that he is sending us into places that are filled with darkness, with fear, with anger, with violence, with mistrust. And he says that it is our Christian calling to be the light. You are the light of the world. Actually, he doesn't say here you have to work for light. You have to earn light. You have to outcompete and become number one to get light. He said, you are the light of the world. Talking about identity, Bob. You are the light of the world. Light is, is who you are. You are the salt of the earth. Salt preserves against corruption, and salt makes things tasty. Do we Christians do that in our world? Be the light of the world. Go do what's right. Go do what is Christ-like in every situation. You know, when I was a little kid at the First Baptist Church in Corinth, Mississippi, I learned that song that I loved, I fell in love with it then, and I love it to this day. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Now, you can get ready. I'll probably have you sing that with me before we leave today. <laughs> I loved that song. Still do. And, you know, as a kid, it sounded so easy. Christ has given me a light, and I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let me shine. I'm going to let my light shine. But you know what? As a kid, I did not know what that would cost. You see, I wasn't aware then of the darkness that life may bring. I wasn't aware of the difficult circumstances where we will have to work hard to bring God's light into what is so very dark. When I was a child, it was easy. But then you see, you become a teenager. And you're at a party where there's underage drinking. You know it's wrong. But there's a lot of pressure to keep quiet and just to fit in. That's darkness. But Jesus says, let your light shine. Then you go off to college, you become a college student, and on the campus at almost every social occasion, uh, there is binge drinking and casual sex. You know it's wrong, and you think, how can I make such a difference on a, you know, a campus culture? But you hear Jesus saying, be the light. Let your light shine. Then you, you get hired for a job. And you recognize that you're in a toxic work situation. A toxic work environment. And where pe good people are being mistreated. And injustice happens on almost a daily basis. Your co-workers make your stomach churn. Darkness. You want to escape. But Jesus says, 
Be the light. Be the light. Then you look around at legal, social, and economic policies which relegate people to the unseen sidelines of despair and hopelessness. The hungry are still hungry. The homeless are still homeless. The afflicted are still afflicted. Dark suffering. And you think, how can I change an economy? And you hear Jesus saying, let your light shine. We look at our family and uh, we see a lot of illness and we experience the sudden loss of a loved one and some are gripped by fears concerning their marriage, their children, their future, all these dark clouds. But we hear Christ's gospel call saying, let your light shine. You know something? Satan would love, he would love for us to throw up our hands in resignation as we lament that there's just too much darkness in this world. And, and there's just nothing that we can possibly do to make a difference. That would be easy, wouldn't it? That would be easy to throw our hands up and say, I quit. There's too much darkness. I mean, look around today. There is so much darkness. There are angry political divisions. There are, there is, there are, there's so much violence. And how many days do we watch the news when there's not a shooting somewhere? It's dark out there. And we say that the darkness is too much and we can't possibly make a difference. But you know what? We could give up. But if we give up, then the darkness wins and the light gets lost. Jesus calls for us to make the hard, difficult, daily decisions to be the light in the darkness. Our vocation is being the light. Be the light in our families. Even when it seems as though no one else cares. Be the light on the campus, even though it seems nobody else believes. Be the light in the workplace, even when we wonder why God wants us to stay in such a situation. Be the light as citizens and as neighbors, even when we wonder how we can make a difference on behalf of the hungry and the homeless and the victims of injustice. That's our daily and difficult vocation in Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. I want to know that you're with me here. Looking for, listen, you can look for an easier spiritual guru if you want to. Just go on the internet. They're all over the place. And they are promising everything and they are demanding nothing. But if you want to change the world for the better, if you want to demonstrate that there is an alternative to hatred and selfishness, if you want to show others that the gospel, the gospel is the way to life that, and it makes ultimate sense, if you want to continue the transforming work that Jesus set in motion, then do this. Pick up your cross 
dust yourself off, get on the bus, walk into the darkness, and be the light of Jesus Christ. You know, death tried to lock that light in a tomb. Uh, but that first Easter morning was radiant with Christ's eternal life. And today can be radiant too. Perhaps that's the most important thing that we need to learn and remember from today's gospel. You know, here, here in Matthew 5, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. But over in John chapter 8, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. You see, ultimately, none of this depends upon us. It depends upon Jesus in us, the light of the world. Ultimately, none of this comes from us. It comes from Jesus, the light of the world. None of this ultimately originates with us. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the light. You know, just this past week, I had a better understanding of my vocation. I went to a church. I do this often. I went to a church. It was during the daytime, and this church has beautiful stained glass windows all the way around. And... All of a sudden, the, can the sun sh began to shine fully, and it just burst through those windows with brilliant color. I mean, as the light came streaming in through the glass, it, there, it was just a rainbow of color all throughout the church. It filled the whole space. Now, if you went to that church at night and you looked at those windows, it would just look dark. It would look like the dark side of the wall. But, but during, the, during the daytime, the light began to shine through and you could see all the brilliant colors. Well, listen, listen. Christ is like that. Christ is the light of the world. It comes from him. It is him. And today... Today, Jesus is asking us to allow his light to shine through us like those stained glass windows so that there will be beauty all around. Without Jesus, I wouldn't have any light to shine in this world. Not without Jesus. If I stay, and if you stay prayerfully connected to him, if you will remain in prayerful communion with Jesus Christ each and every day, then his light will shine in and through you. As his life shines through us, I tell you, it becomes a rainbow of detailed and diverse color and it radiates the beauty the glory of God in places that need him the most so in the end in the end I'm not the light Jesus is the light. And if we let him be the light in us and through us, we can truly be a light in a dark, dark world. We can walk on to any bus and we can walk into any 
dark situation. Shining with a divine light, which always overcomes every darkness. Amen and amen.